Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 19 of the chapter Solutions. In the past few videos, we have been discussing colligative properties. Colligative properties are the properties of a solution which depend on the amount of solute and do not depend on what the solute is or they do not depend on the nature of the solute. I told you that there are four colligative properties. The first is relative lowering of vapor pressure. The second is the elevation in boiling point. Third is depression in freezing point and the fourth is osmotic pressure. I've discussed the first two with you that is relative lowering of vapor pressure and the elevation of boiling point. We now come to the third colligative property that is the depression in freezing point. But before I discuss the depression in freezing point, let us briefly revise what we did in the previous colligative property where we talked of the elevation in boiling point. Why there is uh, an elevation in boiling point is what you understand when you do the first colligative property where we see that there is a relative lowering of vapor pressure. So as a result of relative lowering of vapor pressure, the boiling point of the solution is always higher than that of the pure solvent. And why is that? That in the solvent, if this is the curve, if this is temperature and this is vapor pressure, that if this is the curve for the pure solvent, then when you add solute to it, the molecules of the solute occupy the surface and the, some of the surface area and therefore the surface area available for evaporation decreases. As a result of which the boiling point of the, the vapor pressure, it, de uh, it decreases. And since the vapor pressure decreases, the boiling point increases. And that's why the boiling point of the solution is greater. What is boiling point? Boiling point is that temperature at which the vapor pressure of any substance becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. Now, at this temperature, if this is Tb0, the solvent, the vapor pressure of the solvent became equal to the vapor pressure, the atmospheric pressure. But when you added the solute, the vapor pressure of the solution was lesser and therefore the vapor pressure of it took longer or you had to heat it up even more so that the vapor pressure of the solution would become equal to the vapor pressure of to the atmospheric pressure. And when that happened at a higher temperature, you obtained the boiling point. So the boiling point of the solution is greater or larger, higher than the boiling point of the solvent. We understand this. Now, we are going to move on with this. If this was boiling, what is melting point or freezing point? Freezing point or melting point is basically the same temperature, only the process is different. Melting is when the solid gets converted into a liquid and freezing is when the liquid gets converted into the solid. So either way, it is basically the same temperature. So we would say freezing, since we talk in terms of freezing point, we'll say freezing point is that temperature at which the vapor pressure of the solid and the liquid become equal. When the vapor pressure of the solid and liquid become equal at that temperature, we call it the freezing point or the, or the melting point. Just as we said in the case of boiling point, that that temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. In the same way, here when we describe the freezing point, we say it is that temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid state becomes equal to the vapor pressure of the solid state. Look at this graph now. This is showing you freezing. This is the solvent when it was pure. And this is the curve for the pure solvent. At this temperature, T0F, the solvent freezes. And when it freezes, its vapor pressure decreases and it decreases along this second curve, right? So this was the solvent and as it froze, the curve changes and it turns into this. And now when you add the solute to it, we know the vapor pressure of the solution would always be less than the vapor pressure of the uh, solvent, pure solvent. So if vapor pressure is lower at any, for the same temperature, the vapor pressure would be lower. And as we start extending this of the solution, we find that it comes and touches the uh, line for the frozen liquid here, somewhere below at a lower temperature. And since it touches it at a lower temperature, we find that if T dot F or T naught F was the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, the vapor pressure Tf of the solution, by the time it comes and touches the solid curve, it becomes Tf, which is less than T naught F 
which means that the freezing point of the solution is lesser than the freezing point of the pure solvent. Just as we had seen in this case that the boiling point of the solution was greater than the boiling point of the pure solvent. In the case of freezing, we find that since it touches the solid curve at a lower temperature, Therefore, the freezing point of the solution is always less than the freezing point of the solvent. And that is the reason why this property is known as the depression, that is decrease in freezing point. Now, there is a depression in the freezing point, that's the colligative property. So, what do we mean when we say it's a colligative property? Here also, just as we talked in the case of... Uh, the elevation and boiling point, we said delta Tb was proportional to the molality of the solution and not on the nature of the solute. So in the same way, this difference, if delta Tb was the difference between the boiling points of the solvent and the solution, delta Tf would be the difference in the freezing points of the solution and the solvent. So in the same manner, since this is also a colligative property, it depends on molality. So what is delta Tf? Delta Tf now, this difference since there is a decrease. So how would you find out the difference in the temperatures? The T0 uh, F, that is uh, the freezing point of the solvent minus freezing point of the, uh, of the solution. Why? Because freezing point of the solution is smaller. Therefore, in order to know the difference, the larger quantity is T0 F minus Tf will give you the value or the magnitude of delta Tf or the difference in the temperature. And just as we did in the case of elevation of boiling point, the depression of freezing point that is delta Tf is proportional to the molality of the solution. M-O-L-A-L-I-T-Y, molality. How do you define molality? Molality is the number of moles of solute present in 1000 grams or 1 kg of the of the solvent. So delta Tf, if you remove the sign of proportionality, becomes equal to Kfm. What had we done in the previous case? Delta Tb was proportional to m, so we said delta Tb is equal to Kbm, where what was Kb? Kb was the molal uh, elevation, uh, elevation constant or it was known as the ebullioscopic uh, constant. It is also known as the uh, boiling point elevation constant. Now this, that Kb, it is Kf is very similar to that only we are talking of a difference in the state. What is the state changing into? Here it was, uh, it was boiling, that is liquid turning into vapors and here liquid is turning into solid. That's the only difference but otherwise you will find similar terms in both the calculations. So delta Tf is equal to Kfm. So this constant of proportionality Kf is known as the freezing point depression constant. It is also known as the molar depression constant and it is called the cryoscopic constant. There is a table uh, which is available and it is there, it is given in your book also where you have the uh, uh, both Kf and Kb, the melting points and boiling point or freezing points and boiling points of a few common solvents. So you usually refer to that table when you're doing your calculations. Having understood this, what, how do we describe molality? Molality, now this is very similar to the previous topic. Molality is the number of moles of the solute. How do you calculate number of moles? Solute, we al always designate it as component 2. So W2, let, let W2 be the mass of the uh, solute taken. Then M2, capital M2 is the molar mass of the uh, solute. So mass over molar mass gives you number of moles. So mass over molar mass is number of moles divided by the mass of the solvent in kgs. So in order to find out the mass of the solvent in kgs, let us say you have W1 grams of the solvent divided by 1000 grams per kg will give you the mass of the solvent in kg. So if you just uh, rearrange this in order to simplify it, you can write what are the numerators and what are the denominators. W2 and upon M2 into W1 in the denominator and 1000 on top. So W2 into 1000 upon M2 into W1. This is exactly what we had in the case of the molar elevation uh, when we were calculating delta Tb also. 
So now delta Tf, if you substitute the value of m in this formula, that is delta Tf is equal to Kfm. So delta Tf becomes equal to Kf and m is W2 into 1000 upon M2 into W1. And from this, you can either, if you have the value of delta Tf, the difference in the freezing point, then you can calculate the molar mass of the solute in case you do not know what the solute is. It is possible to calculate the molar mass from this. Now, both of these values, Kf and Kb, that are there in the table, how did scientists arrive or how, how do you uh, quantify these values? How did, were these values calculated? The formula that was used to calculate Kf and Kb would be Kf is equal to R into M1. Now, R is the gas constant and M1 is the molar mass of the solvent into the value of Tf, that is Tf square, that is the freezing point, the temperature, uh, the freezing point of the solvent, the square of that divided by 1000 into the enthalpy of fusion of the solvent. So that is how the value of Kf is calculated for any solvent. Similarly, the value of Kb is calculated for any solvent from a similar formula where you have R for gas constant, M1 is the molar mass of the solvent into Tb square, which is Tb is the uh, boiling point of the solvent, the square of that divided by 1000 into the enthalpy of vaporization since you're talking of boiling. So it is the enthalpy of vaporization. So this is how both Kf and Kb are calculated and that is, um, and then they, these values are provided to you when you do your calculations. That of Kf and Kb. So this was the theoretical part of uh, um, this colligative property which is the depression in freezing point. Now in part 20 I'll solve a few problems based on this and then we move on to the last property which would be osmotic pressure. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.